Yo, what is up, guys? Ultra Ball's back with a uh, another SPL game. This time, a UU game between Cristo and Sakri. Uh, look at the teams quick before they pick their leads. Uh, so Cristo's got an interesting team because it's got like a double water defensive core with Empoleon and uh, Seismitoad, which is normal, which actually works out fine though because they actually have a lot of type synergy where uh, Seismitoad's able to take on a lot of the electric types that could, uh, you know, take on Empoleon like Mega Main or Rotom Wash, and Empoleon's able to deal with a lot of the grass types in the tier just because of its ridiculous spadef. Um, Sakri's got a Volturn team with Mega uh, Altaria, probably uh, Scarf Infernape. Um, the uh, the Nido King looks like the biggest problem though for Cristo. He has no proper switch ins to that month, so whenever it comes in, it's going to be like a guessing game. So, turn one, we see the Scizor Bullet Punch, which I agree with because you don't want to risk the Aerodactyl having a fire move turn one. Uh, so, that's why he didn't U turn. Um, and I'm assuming it's banded because I'm. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Banded Bullet Punch is the only thing that would knock... Like, that's the only... Mid Life Orb probably would too, but like a defensive Scizor doesn't knock out... Um, doesn't knock out Mega Arrow from full, so... But he just Bullet Punches, confirming he's probably Offensive Scizor, and Cristo made the safe play there. We keep saying... Now, I'm getting behind here because they're playing fast as hell, what the fuck... But either way, Empoleon had Ice Beam to snatch the Gliscor and had knock off to, or knocked it off on the Switch. So I really don't agree with how Sakri played that Gliscor. He didn't even get rocks up in the long run. Um, yeah, I didn't like that set of plays. But now Nidoking uh, is in, and it's a problem, but it's not a problem anymore because he doesn't uh, make a prediction there. I definitely would have clicked Ice Beam because I felt like there was no way he was leaving Empoleon in. I don't know. Um... Alright, so Rotom comes out on the Aerodactyl. I think Christo just has to go into Amoongus here. The Pursuit play was fire uh, on uh, Christo's part. Uh, not every Aerodactyl runs Pursuit, so that's why Sakri obviously was going to switch out there. But uh, yeah, really cool that Christo had the um, really cool that Christo had the the Pursuit for the Nido King, keeping it low because, like I said, that's the one big threat to to his team. Uh, so now we see the Altaria is not mega ing probably because it wants to keep the natural cure, because it could pivot into this Amoongus forever before it mega evolves. Um, and it has Fire Blast, which is cool too. So it's either like a DD mixed set, or it could just be like a special... S I don't know exactly. I'm assuming Defog's on Rotom, so it probably wouldn't be Defog Altaria. But if it is fully special, it could be like a 3 attack roost sort of thing. I don't know. But it could also just be DD mixed, because Fire Blast just to hit Scizor since there's no Magneton is obviously an option. Uh, so we see the Scizor come in on the Empoleon, and we're, yeah, so Christo switches out to Gliscor, uh, fearing, uh, superpower, and it also covers the U-turn too, so obviously perfectly fine play. Sakri finally, um, you know, makes a good prediction there with the Nido King and catches the Cobalion, uh, which is a big loss for Christo. Uh, stays in on the Pursuit, good play by Sakri, but doesn't kill with Ice Beam, so he'll die to the next Pursuit, but... <laughs> I think Christo is like, oh no, nah, let me just risk the inaccurate move instead, which I don't necessarily agree with. I would have pursued it unless it was a roll, but um, yeah, I, the first one did 27, he was at 26. The first one did 54, so without switch out, that's also 27, so I feel like it probably killed anyway, and Ice Fang's not accurate, so it's a risky thing to, to do. Alright, so now this is confirmed Scarf and Fernape, so the Seismethodes coming in is going to get up rocks. Uh, as the Altaria comes in, and I think here, uh, Christo could go, yeah, Amoongus is fine. Because now that the Altaria is Mega Evolved, he could, uh, Poison move it for super effective damage. Scizor U-turns into the Altaria. Christo my HP fire. No, makes a fire play on the Sludge Bomb, you know, expecting the U-turn to come out. Like, there's no way Sakura is clicking Bullet Punch there anyway, because, um... Yeah, there's no way he's clicking Bullet Punch because the uh, Seismitoad was probably the most likely switch in, or the, um, yeah, I guess Gliscor, but I th feel like if he was going to switch out the Amoongus on the Scizor the first time, he would have went Toad. Yeah, and, and that was uh, obviously a good play pursuing because the Amoongus being dead is good for the Rotom, but the problem is Rotom is still walled by the Seismitoad, and the Seismitoad is at 100%, so uh, definitely looking in Christo's favor, I'd say. At this point, it's almost game over. Uh, we see the Scaldir on the Infernape. Uh... Yeah, now Sakri has to go Scizor, uh, because if you go Rotom, I mean, Rotom's completely walled. All it could do is Wisp you, but then you just get Toxic, so that doesn't do anything for you. Uh, goes Gliscor here. Good job pursuing. Definitely a solid play. Uh, getting the If the Seismitoad could be brought low enough, then there's a chance that Rotom could win. But uh, it's going to take a lot for that to happen, because the Empoleon doesn't take very much, even from Volt Switch, and the Seismitoad uh, walls you indefinitely. So you have to like burn it, and then... 
you still can't touch it because <laughs> yeah I mean Rotom could only win if Seismitoad is is removed by the Scizor that's because like yeah so obviously you, it's immune to both your stab moves and even if you wisp that only does six percent and he still has his leftovers so it's not actually doing any net damage to the Seismitoad. Pursuits the Empoleon. So Sakri's playing good here in the end game, and Crystal's playing safer, but I think that's fair because he doesn't need to play aggressive. You facade here for sure. Um, this is probably like a stall breaking Gliscor, like SD facade, because Rocks and Defog are on the two water types, which makes sense because this team does look pretty weak to stall. Um, otherwise, since Koba can't really break stall on its own. Um, yeah, okay, so we get the burn, because, yeah, like, Quagsire walls it if you just bait out the Z-move, whatever. But, yeah, okay, so, we scald again, um, and like I said here, the Seismitoad can't, or the Rotom literally cannot touch the Seismitoad at all, so he just scalds until he kills the, until he kills the Rotom or kills the Scizor, and then the Scizor can't lock into one move to win the game. So, that's game over, um... This and, and this game was actually not on. This this was happening live. That is how fast they played. They they just played 38 turns in like six minutes. So I'm sorry if I missed stuff, but that was like ridiculous. Like what the f what the hell? I I was like talking so fast. Normally that happens when like Doc starts recording late and he has to like replay the turns. You know, so the first half of the game might be going fast. That literally was live recorded and they played 30 turns in five minutes what the hell all right 38 turns all right so we see here sakri uh versus christo christo won. he's on the tyrant so they're up 4-0 at this time i don't know this is going up like a couple days after they played though so this might not be the score anymore but um <laughs> yeah as for now at the point of the time this game happened uh the tyrants are up 4-0 on the class so uh, if you enjoyed the game uh, make sure you like comment subscribe and until next time ultra balls out peace